here we go. Beautiful sunny day and we're just uh, leaving the cabin to head off into the bush um, for an overnighter. It's supposed to get exceptionally cold tonight. Um, so we're leaving around midday and uh, we're going to be chasing daylight basically trying to get our camp set up. You can see I've got my 80 liter woods pack on. I've got my Teton minus 18 sleeping bag. Uh, I've got my mat and of course we're going to be testing out again the Rio Rand tent. So it's a winter tent. It's really inexpensive. It's around 100 bucks I think on Amazon. You know, uh, those of you familiar with winter camping know that winter tents can be really expensive. So we're going to try it out. It's absolutely beautiful in the woods today. Nice and quiet. A few little birds. All the trees blanketed in fresh snow. On our feet today are snowshoes directly from Newfoundland, courtesy of Kirk North of 51. There's the other pair right there, a perfect fit. Kirk, you are awesome at your craft. Thank you so much, we're very appreciative. Go ahead and check out Kirk's uh, YouTube channel. I'll go ahead and put a link down below. He's got a great giveaway going on right now. Um, you know, you can do a VR taking uh, kids out in the bush and showing them all about nature um, to get some entries in his contest. So go ahead, check it out. I think it's running till end of January or February. Filming this kind of weather is really challenging. Um, well, not only do you have to bring the gear, but also batteries freeze up really fast. I hope I can capture a bunch of this trip for you. That's one of the biggest issues, equipment breaks, batteries freeze. So when people film these outdoor adventures in, uh, you know, the minus 30s, uh, I have a great appreciation for what, what's been done because batteries freeze up really fast. We have some old man's beard. I'm going to take some for fire starter for later. Never bypass good fire starter. That's where the beavers were that you saw in my previous videos. Uh, I'd be really careful walking there. In fact, I won't be walking there. There's active uh, beaver lodge right there. You can see the tracks on the top of it and the uh, water. There's the ice is really thin, so I'm going to definitely stay away from that spot. Well, we've made it to the back bay. I'm going to head over here and we're going to take a look at the wood duck house uh, that I set up a while back, see if it was used. Oh, there's a feather in here. So something was in there. I don't know if it uh, spent time in there. It's... Uh, Cool. I had a nest in there, but I checked it out. Basically, they had like old newspaper pellets in there for nest material. So, anyway, they checked it out. It's a good sign. It's his first year in this location. I think first or second, maybe. There's a feather, so it's a good sign. Something over here um, is jumping in the water, sliding down here and going back into the water. So maybe it's like a little muskrat or um, could also be an otter back here. All right, so we've arrived at our site. There's a hill up that way and down here it's pretty flat. So we're just tromping down a spot for the tents. It's nice and still in the woods. No wind really, which is great. Looking above just to make sure there's no widow makers. Wouldn't that be a terrible thing to wake up to or not wake up to? It's starting to get a little bit sweaty, so just open my jacket. Um, don't want to get sweaty out here, especially when it's going to get as cold as it will be tonight. Uh, that could be a deadly mistake. So I'm going to have to just open up my coat a little bit, vent. I've got a fresh change of clothes in my backpack as well, so just before bed I'll change up um, just so I don't feel clammy. Important to check in with yourself, you know, in this kind of weather when you're camping. Um, if you're not feeling right, figure out what it is. Are you hungry? Do you have to use the bathroom? Are you, you know, wet from sweating? Uh, what's going on? So make sure you check in with yourself. Make sure you stay hydrated. Uh, it's pretty easy to get dehydrated in the winter. So I'm just using this machete here to uh, cut some boughs for the tents. So we have some insulation to lay on at night. 
just behind me, um, well actually just in front of me rather, we're uh, cutting down some standing dead. We're going to need a fair amount of wood tonight. That's one thing you can underestimate when you're uh, doing winter camping is uh, the amount of wood you need. So uh, we're going to get some big logs out of the standing dead one over here. Perfect. Well, we've got one of two tents set up. This is my be my mattress for the night. Made great progress with the firewood so far. Now lots of logs cut up, some standing dead. Working on one more log back there. Chops up some littler branches. And uh, this is the fire pit. So I've managed to accident in the, behind the scenes. Uh, we managed to dig out the fire pit. Really important to do that because you can see how thick the snow is here. That's like at least a foot deep. Um, so if you were to build a fire, say, you know, on top of the snow, it's going to extinguish pretty quickly. So you want to dig down as far as you can. I'm going to lay down a few flat uh, pieces of bark there. So the uh, first little bit of uh, the fire isn't in contact with the with the snow. So got a nice little bench here and uh, working on some logs right here that will be chopped up as well. Uh, this is uh, aspen, I believe. Um, so that's good hardwood to burn. There's a lot of balsam fir and spruce in here. So a lot of your softwoods, they uh, they burn really quickly. You know, there's lots of resin in them, but they don't last really long when they burn. So it's good to have some uh, hardwood um, in our pile tonight to help keep us warm. Next, I'm going to set up uh, the rear ran tent and uh, put on my gear because we're starting to lose light. You know, it's probably around 4.30, 4 o'clock, but we're losing light. We're losing light quickly because we're in the bush here. So I'm going to do that now so that we have shelter set up. We've got our fire uh, stuff ready. So pretty soon we'll be able to kind of relax, um, get the fire started, and get some supper on the way. Let's take a quick peek at some of the gear I have with me. Um, we all kind of pooled our gear together. So we've got a machete here. Uh, I believe that's a Gerber uh, with a saw on the back. It's pretty good. I love machetes. They're great for chopping, uh, you know, small brush and stuff like that. Over here I also uh, kind of stashed a couple of saws. Um, so these folding saws. They're really good. This one's I like. It's not mine. Um, but it's got a nice aggressive blade to it. It's got a bit of a curve to it. So it really gets the job done um, when you're cutting wood. I'll just show it to you opened up so you can see the curve to it there. So when you're cutting wood it really uh, powers through the wood quickly. So this is a, I guess it's called a kamalon. So the axe we're using uh, today is a Fiskars. It's a felling axe. I really like the Fiskars products. They're really good. I sharpened um, all of our tools uh, just before winter time so that because I knew we we're going to be out, um, you know, doing some winter camping and it had been a while since we'd sharpened them. So really important to keep all your tools in service. So uh, I did that and it's working really, really well. So I've run into a problem with the uh, the rear ran tent. As you can see, I'm just putting it together, and both of the um, the tent poles are having an issue. Where um, look at this, there's all this extra stretchy cord. Um, this is supposed to be tight into the pole. I've got about eight inches extra, so I'm gonna have to cut this off um, and retie it so that I can um, use this tent pole. So that's a real pain. Uh, we haven't used it that much, and this cord is already. Uh, uh, failing us. So anyway, it's okay. We can do a quick fix here. I'm just going to cut this off, um, tighten this up a little bit and put it back in. And it's all fixed. As you can see it's supposed to be tight enough to kind of pull itself back in uh, to the pegs. So as you can see it's the, the cord sort of in here is nice and stretchy so uh, the poles go back together again. Um, but when it's really 
loose, it wouldn't do that. So now it's all fixed and I can get back on track. Yeah, totally. I was thinking, like... I gotta make a big fire. <laughs> We're gonna want to cook them. Yeah. We want to get those big logs lit, that's the Fair. thing. We need to get those big logs lit. Yeah, exactly. Take a look inside the other tent. Got a layer of poly there on the ground. Whoa, the fall. Some boughs under here, and look at that. Right up off the ground. Got a few different uh, mattresses there, and a uh, really nice warm sleeping bag and blanket. Gonna be nice and cozy in here tonight. That's what I call teamwork, getting the fire started. He's got their little jobs here at the camp. So, we get this started, and gotta get some of these bigger logs lit. I'm going to get some supper. All right, we've just lost our light and the tents are set up. So inside our tent, we've got the Teton sleeping bags and I've got my little nature hike uh, sleeping bag. That's the one that has the goose down in it. So it should be an excellent second bag to nest inside my Teton. So I'm just going to close it up and uh, there's no snow or such gets in there. We're gonna have to bury our water. Um, I'm gonna build this up a little bit more. We have to bury our water so it doesn't freeze solid. It's already starting to freeze on the edges. Um, so the snow is very insulating. So we'll be insulating uh, the water. Also, there'll be some food for breakfast that I don't wanna freeze solid overnight. So I'm also gonna put that here in the, well, not actually right here, but in another spot uh, in the bush away from the tents. Uh, I'm gonna put that as a food cache for the morning. And what's for supper? Well, it's the MRE Star. I'm going to have menu four, which is the white chicken and rice with veg. So that'll be really easy. Uh, I actually don't need the fire to make this meal. I just need some water. Uh, the MRE Star has a, this one in particular, has a, a special unit in there that heats the food for you. So it's about 1,200 calories of uh, food right there. So that should get me through the night, no problem. Here's my MRE, the chicken rice with vegetables. It comes with uh, oatmeal cookies, nuts and raisins, candy, uh, salt, pepper, um, some coffee, juice. Here you can see the, the heating pouch. So um, that's what I'll be sticking the MRE in to heat it up to eat it. I'm back here in the tent. Uh, just, waiting for my, just waiting for my MRE to heat up and realized I was feeling really chilled. So I came back in the tent. I've done a full, complete change of clothing um, and I feel already a lot better. I don't feel that dampness um, against my body. We're probably sitting at around minus 18, minus 20 right now. Um, so it really, you know, you can get feeling pretty poorly pretty quickly if you're uh, too damp. So just uh, did a full change out of my clothes. Um, I'm going to head back to the fire and have my meal. Um, at first when I heated up the uh, Emery meal, I didn't mix the water all the way through at the pouch. So only a third of it heated up. So I wondered what the heck was going on. <laughs> so I shook it really well and looks like we're back in business. It is heating up. There's the chicken with veg, kind of looks like a paste. Didn't really heat it up as warm as I actually thought I did. I guess I spoke too soon. Um, not as hot as, say, in the summertime, so a little bit of a disappointment there. Um, it's been sitting for at least probably half an hour in the heater. Um, just kind of warmed up. It tastes okay. It's not amazing. I don't know if I'll try that one again. I'll try the beef stew one some other time in the future, but whatever. It's food. Happy birthday. birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Nice way to spend a birthday in the woods. Thank you so much. Beats mango cheesecake. That's really good cheesecake. Very good. Mango cheesecake. All right, so we're heading to bed now, and I'm just kind of encasing the fire in a little bit of uh, wood there, so it should smolder for most of the night. And uh, if we need to get up in the night to warm up, got lots of extra wood ready to go. So just going to pack it in for the night, brush my teeth, and go to sleep. It is such a cold night tonight. Uh, it's a clear night, so it's amazing. You can see all the stars out right now. I wish you guys could see this. It's amazing. If you ever have a chance to go out winter camping, you should do it. You don't have to go out in minus 25, but uh, just to go out and experience the woods uh, in the wintertime is amazing. It's very quiet still. It's even more special if it snows overnight on your trip. 
Well, I'm going to nestle in my bed. I've got the nice Teton bag waiting for me. I've got uh, nice uh, wool long johns to wear. And I'll probably just wear my fleece lined pants to bed as well. Uh, just to stay nice and warm. I've also got a few hot packs that I'm going to be putting in my toes and my hands and <laughs> wear mitts to bed. Honestly, I will. Um, it's a pretty cold night tonight and I just don't want to have a, a bad sleep because I'm cold. We've got the fire ready there just in case someone needs to get up in the night and use it to get warmed up. That'd be fine. I've also got a nice hot um, carafe full of hot water, basically. So if you need tea in the night, I'll be able to get warm. Also, another way to warm up if you're cold is to eat something. Get up, do jumping jacks. Um, you know, always, uh, if you wake up in the night, make sure, see what's going on. Why did you wake up? Is it because you're cold, you're hungry, or you need something to drink? Don't forget to check in with yourself. All right, have a good night, and I'll see you in the morning. So, good morning. It is now 8 30 and uh, it's a pretty cold night but I was nice and toasty in my sleeping bag so let's take a look things are pretty iced up in here so I'm nesting in my sleeping bag I've got my, my one sleeping bag here and my second one the Teton right here this is just from breath overnight everything's really frosted up uh, inside the uh, inside the tent but I was nice and warm now I'm kind of Gotta get up and make some breakfast. Kind of don't want to <laughs> get up. I'm pretty warm. I've got my snow pants on top, my jacket on top of me here. I also put my um, my sleeping pad within my sleeping bag so that I couldn't roll off of it into the night onto the cold ground. So that was a really good idea. I was pretty snug. Sure is cold this morning. Slightly overcast. The high today is supposed to reach around minus 14. The woods are incredibly quiet. Not a bird is chirping. Everything's kind of hunkered down after a cold night. I saw a little bit of a red squirrel zipping around, um, going up one of the trees. Probably have to, probably has to eat a little bit of something because um, it was a very cold night for all of us last night. So, but just beautiful. Nothing beats being out in the woods. So nice. Well, here's our camp in the morning. Let's go check out the fire situation. I'm gonna have to get that going. Well, it looks like it's pretty much burnt out. There's still a little bit of smoke coming out from this ash pile. So there is hope that I could probably get it started. Um, let's give it a try. There we go. Excellent. It's under here. Got some birch bark there. It's like this little thing right here. Yeah. a little stick. Success! It worked. We managed to have a little bit of an ember left from last night and put a little birch bark on top. Some little sticks fanned it really well and away we went. Hooray! Oh, this is a necessity this morning. It is really cold. The trees were popping and uh, cracking in the night because of the freezing cold temperatures. Let's check the water. Oh. Some in the middle hasn't frozen, but I'm gonna have to put this by the fire. I thought it was gonna insulate it enough, but I guess it was cold enough last night that uh, it froze. So let's bring it over by the water. Bring it over by the fire and we'll warm it up. Get some water ready to make some oatmeal.
here's my food cache. I want to see if it's uh, frozen or what's going on. We've got some eggs and I've got some bacon for this morning. These ones are all pre-boiled. <laughs> oh, the bacon's not frozen. Yay, look at it. It's uh, totally thawed. So that was, I think I just didn't put the water in deep enough, but this is nice and thawed. So I'm going to put this uh, on a stick over the fire. And these are some, some boiled eggs. So I'll have those. Those are probably good. The trail mix. And, uh, oh yeah, got some, uh, I forgot about this, got some mango juice. Awesome. This isn't frozen either. It's um, it's nice and uh, fluid still, so that's good. I got my oatmeal, and then I've got some of these. Uh, uh, it's this jerky right here. So cool. There's the bacon on the fire. It's gonna be good. While my bacon's cooking, I'm gonna have some oatmeal. Let's cut off the bottom of the MRE bag to make uh, a bowl. So that's pretty easy to do. to warm up the core. Well, bacon's hot and ready. <laughs> oh, that is really good. Mm. Smoked bacon over the fire. You can't beat it. Well, I was able to keep my camera warm last night by plugging it into a, a power bank that I have. So the battery was continuously charging overnight. So uh, right now I'm using just my phone camera because it seems to be one of the better ones I have for the type of lighting and the temperature. I find the Canon freezes up. I used the GoPro as well on this trip, but it froze up a couple times. So it seems like keeping the cell phone right next to my body and keeping it plugged in overnight made sure it didn't die on me. So in terms of gear, everything worked out really well. Um, I really felt warm, nested in the um, goose down sleeping bag within my Teton. I think that was essential, as well as having those heating packs uh, in various locations to keep me warm at night. My jacket, my snow pants, and just dressing in layers. You know, having a t-shirt, merino wool, um, long sleeve sweater, uh, also wearing a goose down vest that I have on and a hoodie really helped. That way, if uh, I got sweaty or cold, I could just take off a layer, change it out. It was perfect. One bit of gear I was disappointed in, um, the rear ran um, the poles like you saw earlier. Uh, there's something happened with the, the string, the bungee string um, in there to kind of hold the, the poles. Um, I don't know what happened there. They got really fatigued. They weren't doing their job. So I just had to do a quick little uh, on the fly fix of those to get them to work. Ever since they've been fine, but we'll see what happens. Maybe I'll have to change out that cord in there at some point in the future. Can't say enough good things about these hand warmers. I also have the body warmers and the toe warmers. When I slept at night, I had uh, one on my back, one each mitt, and one each in my socks. And boy, did that make me feel great all night. So good thing to have. Get a box of these. Um, they're really easy to use. And uh, boy, will they keep you warm at night. Also of note, the Gerber Parang. Now this one isn't mine, um, but uh, I guess I was a little hard on it. You can see that it's uh, the edge of it's all bashed up from me chopping the wood there. I really haven't had trouble with my Bear Grylls version of this one. Um, so I guess this one has a bit thinner, uh, you know, blade on it. So I'm going to have to replace this one. Oops. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Just be wary. Some of these have thinner, um, blades and, uh, they may not work as you would expect. Before I've, I've always sort of chopped small little logs and stuff like really tiny trees and stuff with these. Um, but this, uh, this Gerber really wasn't up for the job, unfortunately. I'm also really happy with my footwear. I wore my mucklucks with Gore-Tex overboots and my feet were very warm. At any point when they were cold, I just put in a couple little toe warmers and we were good to go. I found them way warmer than rubber boots that I've worn in the past. Uh, rubber boots tend to hold in uh, a lot of moisture and I found that I would get really, really sweaty in them very quickly. Um, the mucklucks can be worn without the Gore-Tex overboots when it's below, I'd say getting towards under minus 15, minus 20. Like I said earlier, I found that when it's warmer than that, my, um, you know, they breathe and so my, my feet would unthaw some of the snow on top of them and uh, it would basically cause my feet to get a little bit wet or the, the leather to get a bit wet, even though I had put a little bit of um, dubbing on the outside. 
So anyways, a great choice for footwear. I will definitely do, be doing that again. When I had them at my fall camping trip, I didn't regret it. It was uh, the best decision I ever made. One of the biggest struggles out here at these temperatures is keeping your water from freezing as well as um, your food from you know freezing up as well. So burying your food in a food cache is a good way to do it. I need to bury the water a little bit deeper another time. That's okay. We had water in a thermos and I could have melted some snow in a pot if I needed water right away. So that wasn't a huge concern on this trip. Uh, the MRE Star meals, um, they're very good, but unfortunately I, I really thought the heater was going to work in these temperatures. It really didn't do the job. I kind of had lukewarm food, which is fine. I mean, it's it's calories, but, you know, it would be nice to have a really hot meal. So another time we could certainly put the, the pouch in a pot of boiling water to cook it a little bit faster out here instead of using the, uh, the flameless heater that it comes with. Let's take a look at this homemade sled, just a kid's sleigh from Canadian Tire, all rigged up. With some, just some loops here and some strapping, so you can tie your gear in. And this is really handy. These are hiking poles on this end of it, strapped to a backpacking belt. Into like a little pouch here. More bungees. And it looks like underneath, uh, reinforced with a ruler and some hardware there. So that's worked. Uh, quite well and it's got some uh, yeah sort of attached by carabiners there the uh, the hiking poles are attached by carabiners perfect so you can kind of put some gear on there so if you want to make a, a sled for an adventure like this that's what you can do it works really really well um, here I've got the pelican sled it's so over here um, just got the carabiner and some um, cabling and some plastic tubing at the end, got some carabiners you can strap to um, backpacker's belt. Last year I was towing some wood and I messed up and ripped out the eye hook and the hardware. So I'll have to use some, some rope for now, but I do have uh, hardware to fix that. It happened on both sides, so we'll, we'll get on top of that and fix that for our next trip. There it is, all loaded up. So it takes quite a lot of gear, but it does the job. Well, we're just going to... Uh get packing up. Breakfast was really good. Sat by the fire for a few hours, had a nice chat. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's adventure down camping in the cold in a tent. I think next year we have big plans. I'm thinking I want to make a canvas wall tent and also to make a little wood stove for it so we can be out here for many nights in a row in comfort. Well, stay tuned. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, keep up my resolution to make that for next year's adventure. Have a good week as always. Take care.